The field level action cam is brought to you by the Samsung Galaxy S8. Unbox your phone. Jay Happ measuring off his landing spot, getting set to take on the Angels. Angels had a rough stop in Cleveland. They were swept in the three game series. And they've had a tough time in first games of series. They have lost seven straight series opening ball games. Mike Sosha's ball club going through a little bit of a tough stretch right now. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Angels. Top of the order is the former Blue Jay, Yunel Escobar, and then Mike Trout. He was out about six weeks with a thumb injury. He's hitting 2 327 for the season. He's always hit well against the Blue Jays. Seven for 18 this season, and he's hit for the cycle against the Jays. And Emphon Simmons might be one of the best players nobody really recognizes. You don't hear an awful lot about Anderton Simmons, but he is one of the best shortstops in the game, and right now he's riding a six-game hit streak. And he's hot, hot, hot. He's got that average up to 300. They will take on Jay Happ. Jay getting ready for his 14th start of the season, looking for his first win since July the 4th. Way to beat the Yankees in New York last time out six innings against the Indians. He gave up a season high nine hits and seven earned runs against the tribe. Beat the Angels last uh, September the 15th last season allowing an earned run over six innings for his only win versus L.A. in six tries. He's three and seven with a 413 earned run average this season. He had lost his first five decisions against the Angels. Looking to turn things around tonight and Build on the four game sweep over the Oakland A's. You know, Escobar did not start in the game yesterday in Cleveland. He's back in there tonight here. First of a three game series against the Angels. Just a scheduled day off yesterday. Day game yesterday in Cleveland. Escobar back in there tonight. First pitch of the game is in there for a strike, and we are underway. Well if you could ask for a perfect night for baseball this is what you would get it's 24 degrees the roof is open and it's a glorious evening on this Friday night line drive that's going to be trouble down into the right field corner bounces into the glove of a fan and out of play for a ground rule double. This is a team the Los Angeles Angels who have had trouble scoring runs this season. No problem for Escobar to get it started down the right field line. 18th double half will throw his share of fastballs and here's another one down and away and Escobar slaps it to right field. Good start for the Angels. The Blue Jays have had nothing but problems in the first inning. They have surrendered 72 runs in the first inning this season. That equates to a 635 earned run average. That's the highest ERA in the first inning in the American League. Jay had his problems in that last start versus the Indians. Did not look comfortable in that first inning and gave up hits to the first three batters he faced. Four runs, four hits, and left the runner on base. Mike Trout fouls back the first pitch, haps ahead 0 and 1. There's a good pitch on the inside corner. It's 0 2. Trout is a terrific low ball hitter. One of the best low ball hitters in the game. You know, Hap gets that fastball about belt high inside. 386 on the low ball. He is tied for first with Yoana Cespedes of the mess. Met, so you got to keep the ball up. And they did. Perfect pitch from Jay Hap. Cut strikes out on three pitches. Fastball away, cutter in, and with two strikes, you got to elevate it because he's hitting nearly 400 on low pitches. That's what Hap does. And Mike can't pull the trigger. Out number one. A couple of things that Hap does very well. He uses the fastball a lot. He's got the fifth highest fastball percentage in the American League. Here is Albert Pujols. Breaking ball for a ball. Pujols was 0 for 15 in a three game series against the Indians. First time in his career he's taken an 0 for 15 in a three game series. So he faced some pretty good pitches. His timing was just a little bit off. Just wasn't able to get his share of hits. Generally his share of hits is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> just look at the record books. He's all over the record books. 
This season hitting 255 with runners in scoring position. 48 of his 59 RBIs coming in these situations. Foul back. Haps ahead one and two to Albert Pujols. The Angels have done a terrific job playing here at Rogers Center over the last several seasons. Their record since 2013 here at Rogers Center 10 and 4. Mike Sosha's ball club has done a good job playing the Blue Jays here at home. Got it. Elevates that fastball and blows it by Pujols. A couple of strikeouts so far, the defense hasn't factored in, but it will eventually. In the outfield, it's Pierce Pilar and Bautista. Goins is at second for the 28th start of the season, and Russ Martin's back behind the plate. It factored in that sweep against Oakland, and I think Russell's going to have to factor tonight. Shut down the running game. He's throwing better. Three of the last five caught stealing. The Angels lead the American League in stolen bases with 85. Russell is going to be very important tonight. C.J. Crone. Runs the first baseman. He takes a strike. Runs two for nine against Hap. Escobar with the leadoff double. Still camped at second. He zeroed in on that inside corner. Uh, you have to against these right handed power hitters of the Los Angeles Angels. They like to extend, get that bat head out, so you got to jam them up. Keep that fastball inside. He's throwing it a lot this season. 0 oh 2. Got it. Oh, what a job by Howe. He gives up a leadoff double. And then strikes out Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, and C.J. Crow. Top half of the first. Now it's up to the hitters as Jose Bautista will lead things off for the Blue Jays. Take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons. They are riding a four game win streak. 48 and 54, six games under 500. Bautista, Martin Donaldson, and then Justin Smoke. This season against the Angels, he's five for 15 with a double and a home run. Right behind him, Henry's Morales. Three hits on the homestand, but all three hits have been home runs, and he scored five runs. He's had a big homestand. That's the lineup Parker Bridwell will face, uh, making his ninth major league appearance, eighth start. Angels are seven ones in games that he has pitched this season. He was originally drafted by Baltimore in the ninth round in 2010, acquired by the Angels this season in exchange for cast considerations. And the Angels have had a lot of problems injury wise to their starting rotation. They've had four starters on the disabled list. So Parker Bridwell making his fourth stint with the team this year. Bridwell's 25 years old. He's from Hereford, Texas, up in the panhandle of Texas. He's a wiry guy. And Pat mentioned he was drafted and signed by the Orioles, a ninth round pick in 2010. 
just recalled 12 days ago for the fourth time this year to make the start. Uh, nothing really fancy. He is not afraid to throw strikes. Attacks you basically with a cutter and a change up and a, a sinker. A cutter right there is hit off the end of the bat. One and two. Bautista. And he just 125 over his last 17, but his last eight hits have all gone for extra bases. Six doubles and two homers. A bit bigger breaking ball there, and Bautista strikes out, one away. Well, the Angels, one of the best defensive teams in the majors, they've committed just 48 errors. That's second only to the Kansas City Royals, and they've got a lot of athletes on the field. Trout's in center field, of course, and the catcher, Martin Maldonado. Won the job this spring and is pressed with his taking control of the game, game calling, blocking the balls. Thrown out 38% of the runners, third best in the American League, minimum 50 games. Russell Martin, I mentioned Russell's throwing the ball much better lately. His percentage up over 20% now. Pulls this one on the ground. Big hop for Escobar at third. Two up, two down, and that'll bring Josh Donaldson to the plate. First inning was a big inning for Josh yesterday. He's been fielding the ball much better, so that tells me his legs have been better, and he gets his legs into this one. A little slider down and in, and Josh takes it deep. First home run in about three weeks. Deep to left field, got the Blue Jays back a run after they gave up three in the top of the inning. Donaldson had gone 14 games without a home run. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Off the plate outside. Ball two. Well, the Blue Jays certainly want to build on the momentum that they gathered over the four game sweep against Oakland. Anaheim here for a three game series before the Blue Jays go out on the road. Yeah. Staying away from Donaldson. Yeah, what's new? Everybody's staying away from Josh this season, uh, trying to build on something like that. Whenever you have some games where it looks like you're going to lose and then you come back and win it, it can really spark a team. Bridwell's doing a good job of keeping that ball down and away to Donaldson. Maldonado sets up outside and he's hit his glove. A little bit of a cutter right there. He works quickly, gets the ball, doesn't really mess around too much on the mound, gets it, throws strikes, works quickly, keeps everybody engaged. Full we'll count to you, Donaldson. Pop up over toward the Angels dugout. Maldonado is there, and the inning is over. Three up, three down with a strikeout for Parker Bridwell in his first start against the Blue Jays.
force yesterday provided the firepower with that walk-off grand slam in the bottom of the 10th, but the fireworks actually occurred much earlier in the ballgame. That would be the fifth inning. After John Gibbons gets uh, ejected for arguing balls and strikes, both Marcus Stroman and Russell Martin get tossed as well. Martin telling me post-game, look, Stroman said something to himself after not getting the call, which did not sit well with home plate umpire Will Little. After Stroman's ejection, Mart explained that once he turned around to tell Little, look, you didn't need to do that, Little took his mask off and stepped towards him. Martin felt Little was trying to instigate something, saying, quote, he kind of created the drama there. Stroman declining comment on his ejection other than to say he's an emotional guy. That's how he pitches. It helps him to be the best out there. Buck Stroman's going to continue to be passionate and to be demonstrative, saying, quote, if you don't like it, it's okay. Absolutely. He can't change his personality. That's who he is. And unfortunately, Will Little had kind of a rough day yesterday. Strowman's passed it. He's getting ready for his next start. And he certainly didn't want to come out of the game after four and two thirds, but that's when they threw him out. This is Anderson Simmons, the shortstop. We mentioned Simmons, the six game hit streak. 11 for 22, two homers and four RBIs. His average for the season, and even 300. Nice little hot streak that he is in right now. Get that average up to 300. One of the best fielding shortstops in the American League. Now the bat is starting to catch up to him. Just an overall great athlete. He doesn't have what you would call terrific foot speed. He's got great quickness and a cannon for an arm. Talking to some of the angel people today, they said his baseball instincts are some of the best that they have ever seen. Some guys who have been in the game a long time, his, his instincts on the bases, his instincts on the field. Alfredo Griffin is his infield coach. He says he makes plays that I've never even thought could be made. He is one of the best I've ever seen at going out into the outfield and left field and making those pop ups over his shoulder. Alfredo was a terrific shortstop in his playing day. And he has seen lots of great shortstop over his career. He's been with the Angels ever since Mike Sosha was named manager. He says he's a good shortstop because he thinks of the plays before they happen. And then reacts to what happens out on the field. Fly ball to right Bautista. Backing up just a couple of steps. Simmons has retired. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Brett Gardner extending his career high in home runs. That's his 19th home run. That walk off home run he had last night against Tampa Bay. Pitcher throw him a slider coming in, and I didn't think that was the right pitch to throw him. And Gardner ended the game. Neither does he now. <laughs> and how about uh, the celebration at home plate yesterday? Cost the uh, Yankees their slugger his front teeth. <laughs> you see that? Aaron Judge got hit in the mouth with a helmet and broke a tooth. Cole Calhoun, the right fielder, he's got a ball on the strike, one out. Simmons retired on the fly ball. Calhoun for the season hitting 233. Pretty good pitch inside. It's an inter interesting defensive alignment for the Blue Jays. Left handed batters don't generally pull left handed pitchers, they want to stay on the ball. So. Look at the left side of the infield. They're really pinching him into the middle of the diamond, giving him the whole left side. That ball is in the air and deep. Pilar's on the run. He's at the track. He runs it down again. Pilar was slightly shaded to the opposite side of center. He had a long run. That ball hung up there for him, and he runs it down. A couple of good. Defensive center fielders in this series. Again, they they are pay, playing him to shade to left field, thinking that Calhoun would stay on the ball just a little bit longer. You can see Pilar just to the left of second base, so he's got a little bit farther to go. He got a good break, and his route is perfect as he's able to slow down and haul it in. 
Two fly ball outs for Hap. Martin Maldonado, the catcher. 243 average. He's got a little power, 11 home runs, driven in 29. He's got the most games in the American League. 86 games behind the plate, and his bat's been really much better than they were expected. And number one, as you mentioned, he's very good at calling a game, very good at blocking and throwing, and then the offense is a bonus. He's going to get a base hit here, two out, single to right. The Honda Checkered Flag event is back. It's the best time to find a Honda you love. Beautiful Friday night in Toronto. The roof is wide open. The Angels with their second hit of the game. Now the number eight hitter, Shane Robinson, the left fielder. Robinson just 16 at bats. This is his ninth game. This is a spot for the Angels where Cameron Mabin will be playing in left field, but he's on the disabled list. And their share of injuries this year. They have indeed. Robinson's contract was purchased from AAA Salt Lake on Wednesday. Ball on a strike. Now it's two and one. I think the Blue Jays wanted that one. Jay Happ looking at it. Angel Hernandez. Whenever you see Russell turn like that, he's saying, you know what, Angel, I think that was a strike. And you could bet Angel's aware of the situation yesterday when Will Little had his problems. With three ejections in the game, all coming in at the top of the fifth, and, and Robinson asked for time. Top of the second, Jay Happ stranded a runner in the first inning. Three and one now. Well, Hap was pounding the strike zone in the first inning. He threw 12 pitches in the first inning, just one ball. Got ahead of the hitters this inning, got a couple of quick outs. He walks him, a two out walk. So it'll be first and second two outs as Caleb Coward will come up to the plate. Howard was recalled from Triple A prior to Tuesday's game. This is his second stint with the Angels. He was originally recalled on the 25th of June in Boston. They came to start at third base, and they were sent back the following day. They're just five for 13 in the big leagues this season. That's a 385 average. Well, all of a sudden, Hap has lost the strike yeah, zone. They just lost it. Struck out the side in the first inning was just pounding it in there for five straight batters. Maldonado got the hit. Now he's in the stretch, loses Robinson. Ball and a strike. Hap retired three batters with a runner in scoring position in the first inning. He's got a runner in scoring position this inning. He has the eighth highest percentage of batters retired with runners in scoring position in the majors. He's done a nice job of stranding those base runners. Yeah, if that's when you're going to get them out, that's the time to do it. That percentage is better than Chris Sale. Really lost his command. Boy, he was painting the corners in the first inning, especially inside to the right handed hitters. Two and one now to Caleb Coward.
There you go. Right back to that bread and butter on the outside corner. The Blue Jays defensively have to be aware of who the base runner is at second. It's the catcher, Martin Maldonado. Should there be a hit to the outfield, they have a chance to throw him out. Two two pitch. There's a base hit. Not going to throw him out on this one as Maldonado comes around third and Coward has driven in the first run of the game. All of this two outs nobody on give up a little single to Maldonado to start it. Big at bat this inning was the walk to Robinson especially that 2 1 pitch looked like it was there and momentarily lost it a little bit walked him. That's a four seam fastball as he goes right after Coward. That's what you have to do against the number nine hitter attack him, make him hit his way on unfortunately he does. Plates the first run of the game. One nothing Angels still two outs back to the top of the order. You know Escobar in a ground rule double. Down the right field line his first time up and he was stranded at second. Fouls hit back. Ball on a strike on a third baseman. Escobar spent parts of three seasons with the Blue Jays. He was a shortstop then. A little bit of a struggle for Escobar. His last nine games, just five hits. People forget he was in that giant trade to the Miami Marlins. Part of that Mark Burley trade. In fact, the Blue Jays sent two short stops to the Marlins in that trade. Escobar and Adani Echeverria is now with Tampa. Two and one to Escobar. He's late on that fastball and fouls it back. Well, Hap threw just 12 pitches in the first inning. He's thrown 27 in this inning. And you were right, Pat. It all started with two outs and nobody on. And a harmless little single to right field. Big at bat this inning. A walk to the number eight hitter. Two and two. Just foul. Escobar looks like he's sitting on a breaking ball the way he's fouling off those fastballs. Hap doesn't throw many Jay, breaking Jay, balls. That's right. Jace doesn't throw many soft pitches. A lot of it is fastball. I think it's 71% of the time he's going to use that fastball. And his off speed pitch is more of like a split change where he just takes a little something off of it. Another 2 2 pitch. Just upstairs. It's a full count with two outs. The Angels have scored a run here in the top of the second, an RBI single by Caleb Coward. Robinson's at second, Coward's at first. They'll be moving on the pitch. Escobar with a 3 2 count. Inside, that'll load the bases. Second walk of the inning. Yeah, that should be 30 pitches this inning. That usually means Pete Walker is going to come out and give his starter a little bit of a blow. A couple of walks, a couple of hits. Taking it up to such a great start. After the leadoff double, he struck out Trout, Pujols, and Crone. And now he's got to deal with Mike Trout and the bases loaded. He told me one time he said you know when my pitcher gets up to around 30 pitches in an inning I like to go out there and just remind him about certain things talk to him a little bit and just catch his breath and reset the inning 30 pitches is a lot of pitches for one inning your legs start to hurt start to breathe just a little bit harder plus you got to deal with this guy four career grand slams. He struck out on three pitches 
the first time he faced Hap. Two outs. Staying upstairs to Mike Trout. The plate. You know what? He, he hasn't had a lot of success, but since he's gone into the stretch, now with the bases loaded, it might be a good idea just to go from the windup. He looked very comfortable. First few batters of the ball game out of that windup. Now he's gone into the stretch position and he just has lost the plate. 2 and 0 to Trout. That's where you got to pitch him. Right inside. Top of the strike zone on the inner half. He takes such a violent cut and such an aggressive hitter. He has hit eight home runs against the Blue Jays in just 41 games in his career. Another fastball. There's no mystery to how they're trying to get him out. They mentioned the Angels 10 and 4 here at Rogers Center since 2013 and Mike Trout's had a lot to do with that positive record. He's hit 314 with five homers and 17 ribbies since 2013 right here at Rogers Center. But Hap can get out of it. Outside. Base is loaded. Full count. Two away. Robinson at third, Coward at second, and Escobar at first. They'll be off on the pitch. Pujols waiting on deck. There go the runners. Popped up, and that's going to be into the seats out of play. Thirty six pitches this inning. I didn't see this coming. No, not after what we saw at the first inning. Twelve pitches. And three strikeouts and he had retired five straight the three strikeouts to end the first and the two batters to start the second. Another three two pitch. Walks it. Hap was headed toward the dugout. Angel Hernandez looking at him. I don't think Hap has said anything, but Hernandez, what, what do you, you want? want? Now, there's no reason for that at all. Yeah. And that's what John Gibbons is doing. But I told you, this is a carryover from yeah. yesterday. From yesterday. Hey, just yeah. saying, you get back in the dugout, and I'll get back behind here. I'm John says why are you coming out here taking your mask off. So now Russell Martin's going to go out and have a little conference with Jay Hamp. It's a pitch that Hap thinks is strike three he starts to walk off the mound. It's ball four. Now the umpire says, and oh, wait a minute. Jay's not talking to anybody right here. And then he says, what do you want? What do you want? Yep. I mean, there's no reason for that, Angel. And now he's saying, get back over there, get on the mound, and then John Gibbons comes out here. And that's the whole thing of it. Take your mask off and have a confrontation. Albert Pujols takes a strike. Two outs, two runs here for the Angels in the top of the second. Impressive numbers with the bases loaded. He's in the hole, 0 2. 
Got him with a high fastball his first time up. You got to go right back there. You've had a lot of a lot of pitches this inning. No need to waste one here. You got to go right after him. 39 pitches in the inning. Two walks. Two singles. Three walks. Oh and two. Trying to get him to chase. Chris Smith worked an inning and a third yesterday as he picked up when Stroman was ejected. Two and two now. Smith did a great job as he came in and struck out Matt Chapman to end the fifth and then gave up a single and nothing more in the sixth. Pujols hit his 600th career home run on June 3rd. Just the ninth player to amass 600 home runs. But it's been a little bit of a struggle since he's hit that home run. And you look at the numbers from Pujols, they just keep going. 2,900th career hit July the 5th. He scored his 1,700th run on Saturday. Chases that fastball away, and the inning is over. Jay Happ gives up two runs, all with two outs. He's going to have a chat with Angel Hernandez, the home plate umpire. The inning came to an end when Pujols strikes out, and then Jay Happ comes in to talk to the home plate umpire. And it appears as though it was a very civil conversation. Happ came up three walks, and he said they were both balls, and he's asking about some pitches. And then he's talking about, well, that one was low, and this one, but Happ just wants to know where those pitches are so he can have an idea what kind of adjustments he might have to make. The guy's a competitive guy. He comes out off the mound. He's not trying to show anybody up. It, it becomes a an issue when the umpire goes out, takes his mask off, and has something to say to the pitcher. Jay didn't say anything to him. No. But you know that everybody sees the highlights from yesterday's game and see the confrontation with the umpire, three ejections, and everybody is on alert. Well, the Blue Jays are down two to nothing. They have had 30 come from behind wins this season. Smoke hits it hard, but Coward is there, knocks it down, stays with it, and throws him out. 
told you that this team is second in the American League in fielding percentage. They've only made 48 errors all season long. They can catch it. This is a bullet by smoke right at the second baseman with some top spin on it. Get your body in front of it, knock it down, and make the play over at first base. I'm not sure that Coward caught that ball. I think the ball might have caught him. That was a hot shot, but he stayed in front of it and made the play. Four straight retired by Bridwell. Kendris Morales, the former Angel. He signed with the Angels as a free agent, broke in with the Angels in big leagues. And bear down at first surprises Morales with that call. Kendry has played six years for the Angels, hit 281 and hit 79 home runs. Was after that breaking ball. He's got a share of breaking balls over the last couple of weeks. He's been hammering low fastballs out of here. Good numbers over his last 12 games, including four home runs. Morales can hit a fastball. You look at his batting average with fastballs 94 or higher. He's at 406. Major League average for those 94 plus fastballs is 257. So fifth. he likes to see the heater. Yeah, fifth best in the American League. No surprise, Jose Altuve is number one at hitting a 94 plus. Left one up out over the plate, breaking ball, and that's going to be caught right on the warning track. Couple of steps in front of the wall by Shane Roberts. Hit a home run with any project this season. Home Hardware, proud sponsor of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful night to take a stroll around the CN Tower. As those guests are enjoying a gorgeous evening. Just don't look down. <laughs> Steve Pierce, the hero in yesterday's game. And a walk off grand slam home run. I asked Steve today, I said, Steve, was that your first grand slam? He said, No, I, I've had another one. That was my second. I said, Well, who'd you hit your first one off of? His teammate, Jay Happ, when Jay was with Seattle. It was the third franchise walk off grand slam. George Bell hit the first one, Greg Zahn hit the second one. And Steve Pierce yesterday. Two balls and two strikes. So he wasn't really looking for a certain pitch. He was just trying to get the barrel to that fastball. He knew Hendricks had to throw him a fastball. No place to put him. Gets to that outside pitch. It was a pretty swing, and he even gave us some body English. Yeah, even a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Just get it in there. He knows he's got all of it. Now is it going to stay fair or go foul? He wills that ball fair down the left field line, and the Blue Jays can celebrate. And he came out of the celebration with all his teeth. <laughs> I don't, know, you. I don't know if I take my helmet off if I'm going into that little. Well, you know, they scrub. say that you don't want to leave it on because everybody beats you on top of the head and then that helmet really pounds on you. I like the old fashioned way. Breaking ball in the dirt. And, and what's the old fashioned way? Hit a home run, step on home plate, go inside, have a cold beer, and <laughs> shake hands with your teammates. Well, you don't like all the sunflower seeds? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This year, it's like the powder and everything else. How about the one in Washington, the chocolate sauce? Popped up. Down the right side, foul territory. C.J. Crow makes the catch in foul territory. Parker Bridwell in his first start against the Blue Jays. Six up, six down.
Jersey is presented by Rogers and Sportsnet. This Sunday, the first 20,000 in attendance will receive a Russell Martin red replica jersey when the Blue Jays and the LA Angels face off at 107 p.m. Eastern. For tickets, visit bluejays.com. Buck also Canada Baseball Day on Sunday. Absolutely, Hazel. It's going to be a terrific day. We'll have reports from all across Canada, including reports from Cooperstown. So make sure you check us out on Sunday. Canada Baseball Day. CJ Crone struck out his first time up. High fly ball into right. Bautista over near the line. He makes the catch right away. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by the Samsung QLED, the next innovation in TV. Angels took advantage of three J Hap walks in the second. The RBI single from Caleb Coward and a bases loaded walk to Mike Trout. This is Anderson Simmons who flied out to right field. Goes after the first pitch. Donaldson cuts in front of Tulowitzki. Two away. This is exactly what Jay Happ needs this sitting. He needs a quick one. 43 pitches in that second inning. He had two outs quickly in that second inning, and then he lost a single to Maldonado. A walk, an RBI single, two walks before he struck out. Who holds to end the inning? Cole Calhoun. Calhoun, the right fielder. Takes the first pitch strike. Downstairs, a ball and a strike. Calhoun is now 29 years old. He's in his sixth season with the Angels. Became a regular in 2014 when he played in 127 games. Hit 17 home runs. Goes after that breaking ball. One and two. A little bit more depth on the breaking ball that we have seen from Jay in the past. Fastball cutter change up. That's what you're going to get from him. This man's been a little bit better lately. Bouncing ball. Big hop for Goins. Good inning for half. Just seven pitches. He'll get a few of those pitches back that he used last inning.
Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic Type R, like no Honda you've ever seen. Prior to the game tonight, as is the normal on Fridays in the summertime, it's the Friday Fan Festival outside. There's live music, a lot of entertainment going on. The fans gather, as you can see, and they're treated to a great concert before the game. And then they come inside, and tonight that concert features Deer Rouge. They were the band for the Friday Fan Festival. Troy Tulowitzki goes after the first pitch, bounces it up the middle. Nice play. Tulowitzki stepped on the foot of Grone. And man, he took an awkward spill. Yeah, he either stepped on his foot or stepped on the bag awkwardly, and that's where you roll your ankle. And Troy went down hard after he hit the bag. It was going to be a bang bang play play over at first base. And you can see from that shot there, he's in some pain. Yeah, very tough situation he was stretching for the bag I couldn't tell whether or not Crone got his foot awkwardly on the base and Trulo stepped on it but whatever it was he stumbled after making contact looked like a base hit up the middle power comes over makes a nice play it's going to be a bounce over the first base and right away he grabs that right ankle Let's see him where he steps just purely on the base. He stepped Whoa. short of the base and then rolled over that ankle. That was ugly. He just stepped a little short of it landed on the front edge of that base and rolled that right ankle. I think because the right foot of Crone is in his way you can see it should be on the bag. He, oh, he did the, step on him. step yep. on him and the bag. Yeah that's what started the ankle to turn over and then when he hit the base it just exaggerated the contact that's going to be it for him but crone got his foot back on the base as he was trying to reach for it and then Tulowitzki got there and he stepped on the heel of CJ crone first baseman normally they, they get the inside part of the bag and the runner gets the outside part of the bag as Tulo's got to be helped off after he rolled that ankle. And it looked like Crone got his foot steps messed up over it at the bag where he just couldn't get to the inside part of the bag. Let's just hope everything is okay for Tulo. Yeah, you can see immediately he grabbed his right ankle and the replays just showed you how he rolled over the top of it and in some discomfort for sure. Unfortunate. So Tulowitzki will leave the game and be helped down by George Poulos and Mike Frostad. So one out now for Kevin Pilar. He takes his strength. Gridwell continues to work very quickly. He doesn't mess around. It's the ball back, looks for a sign. He's ready to go. Fastball, cutter. Nice change up. He's got a great ideal pitcher's build. He's long, he's lanky, he's got a loose, lively arm. How did the Baltimore Orioles let this guy go? They actually made the deal in April this season. He was traded for cash considerations or a player to be named later. They had him working out of the bullpen. And Obviously now he looks very comfortable as a starter. He's made one relief appearance for the Angels since joining them. But he has a nice loose arm. He's 
pretty good athlete. He was a great high school quarterback in Texas. 3 2 pitch. Fastball hit in the air. Left field. Shane Robinson coming in and he makes the catch. Blowers retired two away. Troy Tulowitzki left the game with a right angle, right ankle injury. So Darwin Barney is getting loose. He'll go to second. Goins will go to short. Boy, and again, the foot was in the way. Let's take a look at it in real time as Troy's trying to bust down the line and get that base hit. The foot is in the way. He hit the foot, and then instead of just falling onto the ground, that foot came off of the leg of Crone and then hit the side of the bag and he really rolled that thing. Ryan Goins with an 0 1 count. There's a little bit bigger breaking ball from Bridwell. 0 and 2 now. Goins 207 for the season four homers but 35 RBIs. You see Barney getting ready to take the field. Bouncing ball up the middle. They were playing him in the shift. Simmons throws to first for the out. Parker Bridwell, nine up, nine down. He's retired all men he's faced so far. Darwin Barney will take the field when we come back. With Brett Gardner leading off today's game with a home run. He had a walk off home run last night and a lead off home run tonight. Darwin Barney takes over at second as Goins moves from second to short, taking over for Troy Tulowitzki. Martin Maldonado got it all started back in the second with a two out single to right. Looked like a harmless base hit, and then Robinson walked, Coward singled, and two runs would eventually come in to score. That's going to be out of play. Well, the trade deadline is Monday, and everybody is trying to position themselves to make the best deal. Of course, the Red Sox today announced that David Price was going on the deal with more problems with his elbow. He didn't make his first start till May 29th because of elbow problems. So you think they are in the uh, 
business of maybe trading for a starter? I don't know. Remember, not when we were there, they had seven straight different starters when we were last in Boston. They had Brian Johnson, they had Eduardo Rodriguez. Porcello's filling in tonight in place of Price. But it's interesting, the Red Sox are an even 500 if you take Chris Sale out of the equation. Isn't that interesting? Yes, it 500 is. ball club without Chris Sale. And the difference in that team's record, I, I think they got to do something. Dave Dombrowski usually does something in a big way right at the trade deadline. Hap with another walk. That's four walks issued, and it's the leadoff walk here in the fourth. This is the part of the lineup where he had problems last time. Hit, walk, hit. Seven, eight, nine in the second inning. Got him a couple of runs. Shane Robinson walked back in the second. There's a first pitch strike. Two nothing for the Angels. The Angels have two runs on three hits and an RBI single from Caleb Cowart and a base loaded walk by Mike Trout. Strike two. One taking, and two now. Taking a lot of pitches, pound that strike zone. The Angels come into this game. They had only scored. 419 runs this year, the fewest runs in the American League. So you're at the bottom of the lineup, go right after him like that. That gets a strikeout. He has five strikeouts, but he's also walked four. One out here in the fourth inning. Four seam fastball from Jay Hap. Powder River right here, right down the middle. Robinson looking for something else. The super slow mo replay is powered by the Samsung QLED. The next innovation in TV. Can't pull the trigger on, trigger on that four seam fastball. Caleb Coward picked up an RBI single in the second. Hap has had his problems with the Angels in the past. Coming into this game, his career ERA 6.52 against Los Angeles. Hap tips it, Goins bare hands it and bobbles it. Boy, had Hap let that go, it was going to be a perfect double play ball. But your reactions and instincts tell you to swipe at it. And when he did, he tipped it and misdirected it and. Made a tough play for Goins. That would have been a 6 3 double play easily. Goins' momentum was taking him to the bag, and so was the baseball. But Jay's his reaction was I can catch this one and try and get the out. After the ball was tipped by Jay, the only play that Ryan was going to make was a bare hand job, and he just can't come up with it. So that'll be an infield hit. In the bottom of the order again, setting the table for the Angels. Cowards two for two. You know, Escobar has a double and a walk. Strike two. Escobar over the last three seasons has hit 300. He's getting to be a better hitter. 
later on in his career he gets jammed with his pitch. When Escobar for third baseman leads the majors with a 300 average over the last three seasons. When he was with the Blue Jays it looked like he would get into stretches where he was trying to pull everything trying to knock the ball out of the ballpark. His first at bat he went with the pitch hit it down the right field line for extra bases. Still doesn't get cheated. Fly ball Bautista comes in. It's an easy play for him. The runners hold their ground. That's two away. Escobar retired for the first time tonight. And here comes Mike Trapp, a strikeout and a bases loaded walk so far in this game. I hit home run number 19 on Sunday. He missed 39 games with a thumb injury. Ground ball. Goins can't knock it down. It's in the left. Here comes Malden out of the throw from Pierce. Is a good one, but not in time. As Trout picks up his second RBI of the ball game, and the Angels take a three nothing lead. Set up once again by the bottom of the order. They turn it over, and Trout's going to cash him in with a base hit to left field. Good job by Maldonado coming around third base. Don Renicky being very aggressive against the Blue Jays on the base hit into the outfield. This is a team that, for years and years, while Mike Sosha has been here, has been a very good base running team, very aggressive team. On top of scoring the run as that ball gets into the outfield under the glove of Goins. The runner from first was able to go all the way to third base. That's Coward. Mike Trout, 12 stolen bases. He's just been caught once this season. Albert Pujols has struck out twice. The Angels always a great base running team. You made a great point. They went first to third better than anybody. They take a lot of pride in going first to third against the opposition that time Cowart was able to advance to third base on a base hit to left field. Pujols hits it into center. Pilar makes the catch and the Angels get another run but they strand the pin. Mike Trout with an RBI single. Three nothing Angels when we come back it'll be the top of the order for the Blue Jays. Jose Bautista. Then Russell Martin, followed by Josh Donaldson. Three nothing, Los Angeles. in the TD Comfort Zone are guests from one of TD's community partners. Welcome everybody. And after 40 seasons, how would you rank the Blue Jays' 40 greatest players? Just go and visit sportsnet.ca to select your top 40 list. Buck. Thank you very much, Hazel. That's a 
very good study in the history of the Blue Jays. Who are the top 40 greatest players in Blue Jays history? This guy here is going to be on that list for sure. Jose Bautista has put up franchise numbers, home runs, RBIs, career hits. He has done a terrific job. He has 745 RBIs as a Blue Jay. That ranks third all time behind Carlos Delgado and Vernon Wells. Top five. Top ten for sure. Top five possibly. He's seventh on the all time hit list with a thousand and sixty seven hits just fifteen shy of Shannon Stewart. And isn't it funny. He was with five teams before he came to the Blue Jays. Find the right uh, situation. Get some playing time. Maybe somebody on the coaching staff says something to you that the light goes off. Jose has become a superstar. Bautista strikes out for a second time. Parker Bridwell looks like he wants to stay with the Angels. He's got a good curveball. It flashes a 70 on a scale, a scouters scouting scale of 20 to 80. Right up there as he spins that thing out of the strike zone to pick up his second strikeout. Russell Martin grounded out to third base. Bridwell was a terrific high school quarterback in Texas, and if you're a terrific high school quarterback in Texas, a lot of people expect you to stay with football. But he actually had a scholarship to Texas Tech to play baseball. The Orioles took him in the ninth round, but paid him way over slot, and he signed. That was in 2010. Then he had some rough spots in the minor leagues and he was contemplating giving up baseball going back to play college football. His dad had a conversation with Parker and said you know what. Most of those guys are bigger and faster than you. I think you should stay with baseball look like he has made the right decision. I think he's made the right decision those guys. They hit you pretty hard too. Simmons it's short weights on it and throws to first. Beauty Tone Canada's color experts available exclusively at home hardware and building center locations. Two away bottom of the fourth. Josh Donaldson will step in. Aaron Sanchez idle. Because of that finger issue, having some fun, five baseballs it takes a big hand to do that. That's not bad, but you and I, we've seen Johnny Bench hold seven. Johnny Bench? Seven baseballs. He had real meat hooks, that's for sure. <laughs> five is pretty good. That's not bad. Try holding seven baseballs in your one hand. Josh Donaldson with a 2 0 count. That's ball three. Blue Jays haven't had a base runner yet. Three and one. Parker Bridwell has retired 11 in a row. There's the first base runner, Bridwell. Thought he may have swung at it. Donaldson walks. That's the first base runner. Mike Sosha is a little perplexed. It was a late call down to first base to see if John Tumpain thought he went around. He said he didn't. This is looking like his last start against the Boston Red Sox. Seven innings, five hits. Donaldson loading up. On that 3 1 pitch and clearly holds up. Justin Smoke. Breaking ball into dirt. I mentioned his last start against Boston. He had a no hitter into the fifth inning. Two outs into the fifth inning against the Red Sox before he gave up a single to Sandy Leone. Well, he had 
First he, time through, he's got a pretty definite approach. Yeah, he, he knows what he wants to do, and he's making good pitches. He ended up throwing seven innings against the Red Sox. Changeup, we haven't seen that before. It's 2 0 now. Well, the one thing we know about Blue Jays, they can strike quickly, especially here in this part of the batting order. Smoke and then Morales. Line drive. That's going to get down and go up against the wall. Donaldson is headed for third. Smoke will stop at first with a bullet to the base of the wall and right. He just didn't get any lift. If he did, it'd be three to two. He hit the ball so hard that Donaldson can get the third, and Smoke's got to hold at first base. The whole key to that at bat was getting ahead two and zero, oh, and then finding that fastball, and then doing something with it. Hammers it to the base of the wall in right field. Calhoun gets it back quickly, and again the ball was hit so hard by Smoke. He can only get a single out of that. And they have to hold the runner at third base. This part of the order has done so much damage lately. Last three hits for Morales have all been home runs. 20 home runs for the sixth time in his career. And he just missed four straight homers his last time up. He had a breaking ball that stayed up out over the plate and he hit it to the wall in left field caught by Shane Robertson. Two oh again. Mike Sosha knows exactly what. Morales is capable of. Morales hit 34 home runs for the Angels in 2009. Got underneath that one. High fly ball. Calhoun, the right fielder, waits on it, and that'll end the inning. Blue Jays threaten, but don't break through. 3 0 as we head to the fifth. Now, time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected to the game's best players all season long with game day. Live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Hazel, if you had that app right now, you'd find out that Masahiro Tanaka is throwing a perfect game in New York against Tampa Bay. Through five innings. Texas has a 2 nothing lead over Baltimore in the bottom of the first. Kansas City's up 4 nothing over the Red Sox. CJ Crone goes after that first pitch and it's a fly ball to Pilar. You know Buck you mentioned Kansas City just now. 
over their last nine games. They have out homered the opposition 20 to 2. Mustak has hit another home run tonight. Yeah, and Jason Vargas is pitching tonight. But Kansas City has done a terrific job as they have that eight game win streak. They've outscored the opponent 63 to 25 during those eight game wins. They're hitting 323 as a team. Who was saying to tear them apart? And Everybody. Trade all their guys? Everybody. Everybody that was in was, April. Everybody was wrong. Now they're trying to add players. The caveat to that eight game win streak. It's come against the Tigers and the White Sox. But tonight. They lead the Boston Red Sox four to nothing. Andrew Simmons. He is 0 for 2 so far. The Cubs are in Milwaukee and it looks like a do or die situation for the Brewers. They need to get something going. They can't seem to get things turned around coming out of the All Star break. Milwaukee is 4 and 13 in their last 17. Wow. The Cubs have gone 11 and 2. How about the way the Cubs have turned things around in the second half? The starters are 10 and 0 in the second half of the season. There you go. We were saying that about a month ago. Hey, don't let these guys out of your sights. Another fly ball, not deep. That's to Bautista in right. This 4K broadcast is brought to you by Samsung QLED TV. Experience Canada's team in all the colors of the game with the next innovation in TV. Beautiful shot of Center Island and Rogers Center, CN Town. Gorgeous night here in Toronto. One more note on the Cubs they've won nine straight road games. They haven't lost on the road since July 1st. They've made up a heck of a deficit, haven't they? They are now leading in the National League Central. They were down five and a half games. And now they have a game and a half lead as they interplay tonight. Scoreless in the middle of the second in Milwaukee. Jay Happ with a 1 1 count on Cole Calhoun. Cleveland keeps rolling along. They're in Chicago playing the White Sox. They just finished up a perfect homestand. 7 0 on the homestand, and they have a 1 0 lead over Chicago. Houston that Dallas Keiko back off the disabled list Keiko 9 and 0 coming off the DL that he has left the game after three innings surrendering three runs on six hits broken back little dribbler towards second Barney waits and throws out Calhoun three up three down he Angels go quietly in their half of the fifth. Pierce Tulowitzki, not excuse me, Pierce Barney and Pilar when we come back.
Moustakas is having a terrific season in his free agent walk year, and he is closing in on Steve Balboni's franchise record. 36 home runs, a record for home runs by a Royal, and Moustakas connects for his 30th tonight. Just saw him the other day. He was here scouting for the Giants. High fly ball as Calhoun gets to it. Pierce is retired on the foul fly ball. And I asked him about that uh, record being broken by Moustakis. He goes, you wouldn't believe how many phone calls I'm getting from all these reporters about that. He goes, hey, records are made to be broken. He hopes Moustakis does it. He is maybe the most gentle giant that we yeah. have ever been around. Huh? Steve Balboni, terrific guy. And you're right, he's probably pulling for Moose. Darwin Barney took over after Troy Tulowitzki injured his ankle when he stepped awkwardly on the foot of first baseman C.J. Crone and stumbled over the bag at first. Let's take a look at that play one more time. Concentrate on the right ankle of Tulowitzki. Troy's trying to beat out an infield hit. First baseman gets his foot on the inside part of the bag. Troy hits his foot and the bag and really rolled that ankle. That did not look good as he has helped off the field. No, we hope that it's the best possible outcome. John Gibbons doesn't need another loss of any of his players, pitchers, position players. The Jays have had more than their share of injuries. One and two to Darwin Barney in his first plate appearance. Darwin for the season batting 217. 40 hits and 184 at bats outside two and two. Fly ball into center. Trout calls off the right fielder Calhoun and makes the catch. Tell you when Mike Trout calls you off, you better peel out of the way. Built like a football player, I wouldn't want to run into that guy. And he's fast. He gathers a lot of momentum. Two outs here in the fifth. That's a big Trout fan right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> High fly ball. Chuck calls for it again. Three fly ball outs on just eight pitches for Parker Bridwell. She retires the side in order in the fifth. Reigns, Reigns is 
being inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame on Sunday. And you can catch part two of Jonah Carey's special conversation with the future Hall of Famer tomorrow on Blue Jay Central. Part two comes your way at 1230 Eastern, 930 Pacific Time. Doug. Great Sunday for baseball across Canada. Hall of Fame taking place on Sunday. Did you get a chance to hear part one? I got to listen to it today. It was really good. So if you're around a television tomorrow, take a listen to part two. That interview with Tim Raines was excellent. Martin Maldonado has been instrumental in the three runs that the Angels have scored. He started things off with a two out base hit in the second. Here he goes after the first pitch. Bautista is going to get there and makes it. Maldonado also walked and scored in the fourth. Dominic Leon loosening up for the Blue Jays as Hap has thrown 92 pitches. Trying to get him through this inning, give him six innings in the books. Shane Robinson has walked, scored, and struck out. It's really kind of a very surprising inning in the second and half through 43 pitches. He had two quick outs and then just lost his command. He would end up walking three in that inning. Barney gets a big hop. Throws to first to away. Hit a home run with any project this season. Home Hardware, proud sponsor of the Toronto Blue Jays. Friday night at Rogers Center, Blue Jays have been great attracting fans to this stadium. Big crowd yesterday afternoon, 47,484, the 12th sellout of the season. Another good crowd on hand here tonight. And their ball club trailing three to nothing. These, Top of the six. These fans have been treated to some exciting baseball, haven't they, over the last couple of nights? Sure have a couple of walk-offs and back-to-back game. Jay Happ retires the side in order. This inning took him just six pitches. Now the Blue Jays got to get something going with the bats. WestJet Rewards. Redeem WestJet dollars anytime, anywhere with no blackouts. Now that's cool. Join today at WestJet.com slash rewards. Jay Happ talking to 
John Gibbons and he's having a conversation with him and not sure if that means he's done or not. Normally you'll see a handshake in that conversation but I didn't see that. You know what it looked like to me how you feel. OK I'm going to send you back out there start that seventh inning. Brian Goins hits a fly ball to much. Senator Fielder has it. But uh, we will see. All, all we have to do is keep an eye on the bullpen. If they start throwing down that bullpen, that might be it for Jay. Yeah, Dominic Leon is still throwing in their bullpen, so that might be an indication that indeed half is done. Back to the top of the order, Bautista, the only two strikeouts that Bridwell has recorded tonight. Bouncing ball, big hop for Simmons at short. Two up, two down. Blue Jays have had just two base runners. Donaldson. Snapped a streak of 11 straight retired. He drew a walk with two outs in the fourth. Right behind him, Smoke singled. But then Morales fried out the end of the inning. And now five in a row retired by Bridwell. Six in a row. Just a 2 0 fastball popped it up to end the inning. Angels are 7 and 1 in the eight games that he has pitched this year. There's a base hit for Russell Martin. Jumped on that high fastball. You can see why they like him. He comes right after you. Looks like he cut the ball a little bit there, trying to keep it off the barrel of the bat of Russell Martin. But Russell's able to get it off the end of the bat and into the outfield for his first hit. Josh Donaldson walked in the fourth. Blue Jays need to string some hits together. They have two hits, just three base runners. We're in the sixth, two outs. Bidwell has been impressive. Pitching ahead most of the evening. A little bit of a cutter right there. Maldonado's done a good job this year. They've talked about how impressive he is taking control of the game, his game calling, blocking balls in the dirt. And if there's one way to get into the lineup of a Mike Sosha coached team, be a good catcher. And he has turned into a pretty good catcher. Donaldson. Fouls off that fastball. Sosha, a great catcher in his playing days, and he was taught by some great catchers in the Dodgers system. John Roseboro and Del Crandall, both terrific catchers in their playing days. Those are instructors that Sosha worked with. Of course, he developed Benji Molina and Jose Molina early in their careers. And Maldonado, like the Molinas from Puerto Rico. Oh, Donaldson got a hanger. He fouled it back. Hanging curveball that backed up one more time. Matters have only been able to hit 167 against that curveball this year, and he got away with a mistake. This whole month, he's done a good job, Ribwell, of using his fastball, pitching off of his fastball. Tried to go curveball there, he got away with one. He's called out on strikes. Third strikeout of the ball game for Parker Bridwell through six innings. He's shutting out the Blue Jays on just two hits.
ran into trouble with two outs in the second. The Angels would send eight men to the plate. They scored two runs on two hits and stranded the bases loaded. Overall, he goes six innings, gives up three runs on five hits. He walked four. Three of those walks came in that fateful second inning. So he's out of the ball game after 97 pitches, and the bullpen will take over from here. Two of those four walks came around to score. Dominic Leon, second time on this homestand that he will take the mound for the Blue Jays. He's done a nice job for the Jays. 2 0 with a 256 earned run average. He has shown a good fastball and a tough slider, averaging a strikeout an inning. Leon will take over and Face the leadoff batter, the top of the lineup for the Angels. Hold him right here, give your offense a chance to win the game, pick up a, a win. Well, everybody knows the Blue Jays can score late, and they have done it. The most game tying or go ahead home runs in the ninth inning or later. The Blue Jays have had three of the top hitters do that in the last few years. Bautista had four such home runs in 13. Donaldson had four in 15. And Morales has four this year. It makes everybody stick around to the end, doesn't it? Yunel Escobar. A ball on the strike. Dominic Leon has done a good job because he can give you multiple innings out of that bullpen. 38 games this year, 18 times he has thrown more than one inning. This is his third appearance of the season against the Angels. That's a good breaking wall. Yeah, when he stays on top of it, it looks like a fastball on the outside corner. He stays on top of it. He can spin a breaking ball. He gets a lot of his strikeouts off of that hard slider. Two and two now to lead off man here in the seventh. Maldonado and Luis Valbuena. Valbuena, he's been swinging it. Not in the game tonight because he's a left handed hitter. Escobar hits it to Barney. Mike Trout. Missed about six weeks of the season, and he is one of the younger players that really understands how important it is to interact with the fans. He's over there taking selfies prior to the game, signing autographs, and you know, like all ballparks, the security does a great job making sure that everybody stays in line, and Trout gives a fan a memorable souvenir. A baseball from Mike Trout. He was uh, down at, during batting practice today. The Blue Jays rope off a, a, an area behind the, the batting cage. And they bring some fans down if they know some people. And he was signing autographs and taking pictures for everybody who was back there today. I mean, he truly gets it. He's certainly one of the faces of baseball, I guess. He has a lot of fun playing. You can see he's messing with Josh Donaldson right now, saying, I'm going to bunt. Donaldson said, Yeah, he, Donaldson says, Go ahead and bunt. We'll just soon have you bunt. <laughs> Trout is one for two with a walk, and he hits the ground ball to go in. You know, another thing that he has done, they, that corner behind the, the camera well there where he's running, that's called Trout's Corner. Because he'll before the ball game go out there and sign autographs right there, that little corner right there. And they bring signs and they say, I love Mike Trout. I love being part of what Mike Trout is all about. And he'll go there before the game and sign autographs. You don't see that a lot from visiting ball players. Now, he is very aware and he's a young guy that came up when he was 19 years old. And he has been. An iconic baseball player finishing first or second in the MVP voting in five straight seasons. He's won it twice. Did you see the little tape of the kid who got the autograph and the picture of Trout a couple of weeks ago? And the young kid was just going crazy. Mike Trout's first season in 2011, he was just 19 years old. He played 40 games that year. First full season 2012, he was a rookie of the year.
Pujols hits a fly ball to left. Pierce broke back. Goins going out. Goins will make the catch, and that will end the inning. Nice inning for Dominic Leo. Three up, three down, no problem. empowers girls and young women to succeed on and off the field. To get more girls in the game, visit jayscare.com slash girls at bat. We move to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Angels have a 3 nothing lead. The Blue Jays have just two hits. Angels have but five, but they have the advantage. Smoke Morales and Pierce for the Blue Jays. Justin Smoke at the first base hit off of Parker Bridwell. Hits this on the line. Calhoun's going to make the running catch. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. It's always frightening anytime anyone gets hit with a comebacker. Okay, she's just joining us. Troy Tulowitzki tumbled over the bag at first in the third inning. He stepped on the first baseman's foot and tumbled over the bag and left the game with an apparent right ankle injury. We have not been given an update on that, but an unfortunate situation for Tulowitzki and the Blue Jays. Kendrys Morales over oh two, a couple of fly balls. Matt Dermody loosening up for the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays trying to make it five in a row. They're going to have to come back from a three nothing deficit. These two ball clubs have split right down the middle. 410 games. There's another strikeout. That's four strikeouts for Bridwell. Coming into this game, each team has won 205 games. Evenly matched. Blue Jays have a pretty good record against them here. Another curveball, slow curveball against Morales with two strikes. Kendris comes up empty on that one. He's 0 for 3. Ripwell's been impressive. Has been. Worked quickly. 
He retired the first 11 men he faced here tonight. Poor Donaldson drew a walk. His ERA last year was 13 and a half. This year, it's under two now. Or excuse me, under three, 270. He's 25 years old. As we mentioned earlier, he was acquired April 17th from the Baltimore Orioles for cash considerations or a player to be named later. Fly ball in the right. Calhoun is there. Another quick inning for Bridwell. He has thrown seven impressive innings in his first outing ever against the Toronto Blue Jays. The telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. The Angels scored two in the second and one in the fourth Mike Trout talking to Andrew Simmons as Simmons will be the number two batter this inning. So he was talking a little bit about Dominic Leone, I'm sure. Trout grounded out against Leone in the seventh. CJ Crone. This one outside, it's one and one on the big first baseman. Crone is 0 for 3. He had his first career home run here three seasons ago. I remember doing that ball game. Young power hitting first baseman sent one into orbit to left field. It's been up and down with this team this year three times now. Just 141 bats at bats coming into this game. Four homers and 19 RBIs. Off the end of the bat. Double barrel action for the Jays. Chris Smith got up early in the ball game. He's back up and has joined Matt Dermody. Couple of right-handers, Crone and Simmons. And then a left hander, depending on what happens, these first two batters, we might see Germany against the lefty. Leon with his first strikeout of the outing. Happy 150th to our home and native land. Honda, proudly driving Canadians since 1973. Beautiful shot of Rogers Center to see in town as the sun has gone down. Here is Anderson Simmons who got some tips 
from Mike Trout about facing Dominic Leone. Well, the first tip should have been. He's got a pretty good fastball tonight. Dominic's had a couple of days off to rest, recuperate. 95 on that fastball. Leone had a perfect seventh inning. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball. He struck out prone to start the eighth. The Blue Jays have welcomed in a ton of scouts this week. They go into the media dining room and there are scouts from every ball club here. They're all keeping track of both clubs. Everybody has assignments of the respective clubs. Scouts will have major league coverage. They'll have organizational coverage where you might have five or six teams. You got to know everything about them. And that's where most of the scouts are. Steve Boris in the light blue shirt, black hat. That's Gary Varsho, who's with the Pirates. So scouts are really working overtime this time of the year. A lot of conversations, a lot of catching up with coaches and managers, saying what's going on with teams. And their respective organizations checking in with the Blue Jays to say, hey, are you in or are you out? What do you want to do? Blue Jays have made it known that if there is any trade to be had, that they want young, controllable players in return. They're not going to sell off all, the, all of their players on this team. Little looper down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Simmons is headed for second. Bautista's throw not in time. Andrew Simmons with his first hit. A little pop up off the end of the bat that dropped in fair territory. And he hustled into second with his 24th double of the season. Raised his batting average 70 points over the last 60 plus games. That's how you do that. Get the 300 hitting pitches like that. And that will be the end of the night for Dominic Leon. Cole Calhoun is the scheduled batter. He's a lefty. So Dominic Leon will turn things over to Matt Dermody. Seven for ten in the last three games against the Marlins. He is batting 421 over his last 10 games coming into play tonight, and now just three hits away from 3,000. Sure, Hall of Famer Matt Dermody will take over here. Came in two days ago against Yonder Alonso. 
and bloom away struck him out. John Gibbons was talking the other day when Germany came back here. Someone asked him, hey, what does he have to do to stay up here? And he said, get left handers out. So he is here to face Cole Calhoun with a runner at second base. His job, get him out. One out. Simmons at second. First pitch breaking ball and a nasty one. Well, one thing Dermody has is a good fastball. He struck out Alonzo the other day. It was 94 miles an hour and it was up. It had no chance against him. Calhoun batting 210 against lefty pitching for the season. Runner going to third and Allison stumbles over Simmons as Anderton Simmons got a terrific jump at second steals his 14th base of the season. Remember we told you about the the instincts of Simmons on the baseball diamond he caught figured out that the Blue Jays are playing a slight pull there it is secondary lead and then the delay steal. Hits him into third base. Donaldson comes up. He's got to catch the ball, elude the runner, and then make the tag. And Simmons gets underneath that tag for the stolen base. It was quite a effort by both Simmons and Donaldson to really avoid any hard contact. Now the infield's got to come in with Simmons at third and one out. Ball on the strike. Good pitch. Breaking ball in a tough spot down and away. Angels have a 3 nothing lead as they bat in the eighth. Big run at third. Breaking ball base hit. Simmons comes in to score and Calhoun messes up the strategy. He gets a two strike base hit and drives in the run. And that'll bring John Gibbons back out back to the bullpen. Dermody in charge of getting that one batter. That didn't work out. Breaking ball got too much to the plate. It's a four nothing lead for the Angels. Chris Smith coming into the game to face Maldonado. In case you just joined us in the third inning, this is Troy Tulowitzki. He left the ball game with an apparent injury. We are told by the Blue Jays he's been diagnosed with a sprained right ankle and will be further evaluated. So a sprained ankle for Tulowitzki. But I'm fortunate for Tulowitzki, and you know, sprained ankles, they are very tricky. You just don't know about the extent of the injury. Have a better idea when they evaluate him tomorrow. I'm sure CJ Crone, the first baseman, had extended his foot over the bag, and when 
to the Whiskey's foot came down. He stepped on the heel of C.J. Krohn and that initiated the tumble. And then onto the bag. And then Chris Smith will now take over. Fourth game as a Blue Jay this season. He has yet to give up a run. No record, no earned run average for Smith. Looking for the ground ball right here. Smith took over after Stroman was ejected in the fifth inning and struck out Matt Chapman at the end of fifth. Then he had another inning after that. He allowed a single and nothing more. Martin Maldonado. Little squibber out in front of the mound. Smith gets to it, throws to first in plenty of time. Smith is a good athlete. He was a former shortstop and a center fielder in college. So once he got to that ball, he took his time and made an accurate throw to retire Maldonado. Blue Jays used five relievers yesterday in the ball game to win that one in 10 innings. Chris Smith is tonight's third reliever. Shane Robinson scored the second run for the Angels tonight. They now have a 4 0 lead. They have out hit the Blue Jays 7 to 2. The rookie starter for Los Angeles, Parker Bridwell. No runs on just two hits. He's walked one and struck out four. Not only is it a good outing for Bridwell, but it's a benefit for Mike Sosha, who's going to use a bullpen day tomorrow. And seven innings in the book for the 25 year old Bridwell. Takes a load off Sosha's mind. Well, I believe he's under 90 pitches so far this year. 89. 89 pitches through seven innings. When you talk about a bullpen day Alex Myers on the disabled list that was his scheduled start they don't have a starter so a bullpen day that's going to be start with petite and then everybody else is going to have to finish the ball game out of that bullpen Chris Smith pulls that one down and away it's two balls and a strike angels were talking about possibly calling somebody up to give him some help tomorrow that's petite as he will start tomorrow Like to get him 60, 65 pitches if possible. See where that takes him. Two and two now. Makes a nice play, takes his time, that ends the inning. Smith gets out of the top half of the eighth. Blue Jays trail four to nothing. Now time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell with Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Versatach. Meet our ultimate yard work companion with up to seven interchangeable attachments. Beautiful evening here in Toronto. The roof is open and just a big half moon up there. And what a job by Parker Bridwell. His first career start against the Blue Jays. Just two hits over seven innings. He has walked one, struck out four, and thrown just 90 pitches. Darwin Barney came into the game defensively, taking over for Troy Tulowitzki. He's batting in the seventh spot. He moved to second with that. Gowans moved from second to short to take over defensively at shortstop. Two and one. Bridwell last time out through seven innings against the Red Sox and beat them three to two. Through 70% strikes that day against the Red Sox. Barney hits it down the left field line. It's going to go up against the wall. Darwin's headed for second. He'll get there with a leadoff double. Mike Sosha has got some thoughts that he wants to do. David Hernandez has been throwing since this inning started. He's going to be watching Bridwell very closely. When you get tired, your legs start to go, so you're a little bit slower in your delivery, and you can't get the ball to the outside part of the plate. Three balls leaked up and in to Barney. Doran finally got one to his liking. Hammered that ball down the left field line. He is closing in on 100 pitches. He might be getting close. That's what the pitching coach, Charlie Nagy, and Mike Sosha are looking for right now. And he still command that ball down and away. Kevin Pilar has hit two fly balls. There's Nagy to the left of Sosha. He's the pitching coach. For me, when you get deep into the ball game like this and you're a young player, it's not what the radar gun is saying. It's where you're trying to throw the baseball. Do you still have the strength in your legs to throw it there? Drive that ball down in the zone. Fly ball to left. Shortstop Simmons is out and he makes the catch. Pillar pops out to shallow left field, one away. David Hernandez, the big righty, is ready. He's standing by in the Angels' bullpen. You know, this is going to be an interesting at bat, I think, in this game. Here's Hernandez, who usually has a pretty good fastball. Teams have been pounding Ryan Goins with the fastball up, and Mike Sosha might not think that. Bridwell has enough fastball to get him out. So ship a very determined walk to the mound. He's going to make a pitching change here. So Bridwell again pitching into the eighth inning and he has done a terrific job. Gives up just three hits. He'll turn things over to David Hernandez to face Ryan Goins.
Bridwell getting congratulations in the dugout. He went seven innings last time out against the Boston Red Sox and picked up the win in a 3-2 ball game, and he leaves in charge four to nothing here with one out in the eighth. And got one out further in tonight's ball game, seven and third inning. He'll turn it over. David Hernandez, the Brave, traded Hernandez to the Angels in April of this past season. So he's pitched in 36 games. He's always had a good fastball and a hard breaking ball. Everything a strikeout an inning. And it looked like Mike Sosha as they got towards the bottom of this lineup and they're ready to turn it over. He didn't want any more base runners. He wanted a little bit more power on that mound. First pitch strike to Ryan Goins. Breaking ball, nice play by Cohen. He flips to Hernandez, and Goins is robbed of a hit. Good play by Crone. That ball was headed down the right field line, and he dove, gloved it, and flipped to Hernandez, covering the bag. That would have brought the tying run to the plate. It's hit to his glove side, so it's a little bit easier play for Crone. A right-handed throwing first baseman, glove on the left hand. He's able to take this one as he goes to the line, breaking ball. Possibly a game saving play right there by the first baseman. Back to the top of the order, Jose Bautista, the leadoff man. They asked the first base umpire if he went, and John Campaign said no. Four nothing Angels. Two and out to Bautista. Hernandez, when he was with Baltimore, had a good arm. Ended up being out pitching for Arizona. Right now, it looks like it's a little bit more deception. A couple of breaking balls to Bautista. He's falling behind. Three and out. Hernandez originally drafted and signed with the Orioles in 2005. He was drafted earlier out of high school in 2003. Came up with Baltimore in 2009 as a starter. But he really found a home in the bullpen. 3 and 0 to Bautista. There's a strike right at the top of the strike zone. Seats and Bautista will get to second with a rocket liner right down the left field line, just inches fair as Marty comes in to score the first run for the Blue Jays. Late inning thunder, that's what the Blue Jays feature. Uh, here they come again. You mentioned the home runs that they hit from the seventh inning on. Making life difficult for the opposition. Jose turns on that fastball. It's 92 miles an hour. So he's able to keep it there down the left field line. Watch the hips clear. And then the bat comes right behind it. Jose still got that bat speed. Another extra base hit. His last nine hits have all been extra base hits. Russell Martin has a single. He's got another one. Hit right to Calhoun. They're going to have to stop Bautista. That ball was hit so sharply it hit to Calhoun on one hop and they stopped Jose a third and indeed the tie run will get to the plate. Josh Donaldson. CJ Crone doesn't make that play on Ryan Goins. This is a different ball game. David Hernandez has given up three straight ropes by the Blue Jays. This one by Russell. He has another multi-hit game. It's just that ball hard, and you don't want to get anybody thrown out now. Not with the meat of the order coming up for the Blue Jays. 
The last three MVPs in the American League are in this game. Mike Trout has won two, and Josh Donaldson won the other. 14, 15, and 16, the American League MVPs playing in this game, and Donaldson will step to the plate with the game on the line. Bud Norris, the closer, loosening up. Two outs were in the eighth, a run in. I don't care how much time you take, he's not going to be ready to face anybody this sitting. Unless the Blue Jays tie it up. I mean, he literally, literally just got up to start throwing. Josh Donaldson won for four against Hernandez. Donaldson homered yesterday in the first inning. Two for five in that game, 0 for two with a walk in this one. Blue Jays hit a pair of home runs in the ninth inning on Wednesday and yesterday in the ninth and tenth. Two and zero count. Darwin Barney doubled to start the inning. He's come in to score. Borderline strike. Donaldson just has to be thinking it's only one. Yeah, that's it, just one. Don't, don't worry about that. Concentrate on what you want to do here. Can't let that one pitch affect you. Pick out one of these fastballs. See how far you can hit it. High pop headed toward the seats, thrown over, and it's about five rows back out of play. So now it's a 2 2 count. Maldonado wants to talk about this one. They've hit his fastball hard this inning. Bautista turned on his fastball down the left field line. Martin single to right field on the fastball. The last thing you want to do though is throw a slider and hang it. First and third, two outs. Ground ball up the middle. Simmons flips to second, and that'll end the inning. Simmons made it look easy. Ball went right over the bag, and he flipped to second for the force out. Hernandez gets out of it. We'll go to the ninth. Leaving the field as Ted Barrett, the crew chief, is on the headset to New York as the Blue Jays have asked them to look at the play at second. Russell Martin 
acknowledged that it looked like the second baseman wasn't on the base when he slid into second on the force out. But the home plate umpire, and there's the call. It's upheld. So a very quick decision by Ted Barrett and the New York umpiring crew. With that, we're going to take another break as we go to the ninth inning. The Angels have a 4 1 lead. Brought to you by the Honda Checkered Flag event. Check out their all star lineup. Jose Bautista has got a runner on base and a pitch to his liking. He's going to double down into the left field corner, his 18th double of the season, tying him with Devin Travis for the second post on the Blue Jays. That plates Darwin Barney as he coasts into second base with that extra base hit. That's our drive of the game. So Bautista picks up his 45th RBI, but Blue Jays still trail four to one as the Angels are set to bat here in the top of the ninth. Caleb Coward, switch hitter, that's right handed. He too was just brought back up from the minor leagues a few days ago. Two for three against Hap tonight. Danny Espinosa was the second baseman for the Angels. He has since gone to Seattle. So he was let go, designated for assignment. Mariners picked him up. Two and oh. Out off the mask of Russell Martin. Chris Smith got the final two outs in the eighth. A couple of ground balls back to the pitcher. Andrew Hernandez checking with Martin, make sure he's okay. Gave him the professional courtesy of walking that ball out to the pitcher to give us a little time to regroup. Sweeping off home plate, make sure Russell's okay. Hard hit ball, Bautista is not going to get it. It bounces off the wall. Now it will stop at second with his third hit of the game. A leadoff double here in the ninth. He's been the star of the game. He made a great play to take a hit away from Troy Tulowitzki at second base. He's been on base three times. This is his third hit as he starts off the ninth inning with a double to right field. Over the head of Bautista. The pickup. They let Danny Espinosa go, bringing Coward. He's responded tonight. Back to the top of the order. You know, Escobar doubled in his first at bat, hit a ground rule double down the right field line. He walked, flied out, and grounded out since. There's a fair ball. They're going to be extra bases as now it's around third. He comes in to score. Escobar with his second double of the ball game, and it gives the Angels a 5 1 lead to get that run right back. One double down the right field line, his first time up for Escobar, and then keeps one down the left field line. 19th double second tonight, another RBI. 
Wasn't trying to move that runner after the leadoff double, which is the right thing to do. You're up four to one. You're going to try and add on right here. And they do with that double. That'll bring Mike Trout to the plate. Trout is one for three. A bases loaded walk in the second, an RBI single in the fourth. Then all right against Trout when they get that ball up. When they miss, he hits it hard. He's singled and driven in a run tonight. Also drove in a run on a walk. Tried to stay up around the letters to him. He got to that one. Pilar on the run. He runs it down. Escobar tags at second. He moves to third. That ball. Looked like he was going to get down, but Pilar ran it down on the warning track in deep left center. Just didn't get it up high enough. They're trying to go back up there, and Trout almost gets all of it. Nice play by Pilar to run that one down. Escobar's going to tag up and move to third. Pilar got a good jump on that one. Infield has to come in with a runner at third and one out. Albert Pujols, 0 for 4. Pujols now 0 for 19. Check that. He is 0 for 20. He was 0 for 15 in the three games against Cleveland. He is now 0 for 20. It's that one to Donaldson. They're going to have a play on Escobar as he slides in and Pujols just barely legs it out at first. Martin took a shot and he almost was able to double up Pujols. Escobar is out at home on the fielder's choice. And now Pujols is 0 for 21. Taking a shot to score that run infield in. Donaldson with another nice backhand play. There's the tag and then heads up by Martin moving that pools doesn't run like he used to almost turns it but it's the Donaldson play that's an in between hop from the backhand there's a strike home long drive to left and this ball is going to go CJ Crow with his first hit of the night it's a two run a home run for Crone his fifth. Three runs here in the ninth. Check that four runs. Crone with a two run home run. Three runs as Escobar was thrown out of yeah, the plate. He was out at the plate. Uh, Pujols is going to score another run. That's over 1,700 now. First pitch swinging runner on base. Told you three years ago he had his first major league home run in this ballpark. A lot like that one, a line drive to left center field. Seven to one, Angels. Blue Jays had won four in a row. The Angels had lost three in a row, and here's a drive to right. Bautista's on the run. He is not going to get it up against the wall and off the wall. Simmons is headed for third. Goins is thrown. No throw as Anderson Simmons slides in with an opposite field triple. He doubled in the eighth. He has tripled here in the ninth. He's extended his hit streak to seven games. Fourth extra base hit of the inning. He takes this ball to right field. It's going to slice away from Bautista, and he's thinking extra bases. He doesn't need a coach on that one. He can look one more time over his right shoulder and know that he can get to third base. Taking the ball the other way. 70 points to his batting average over the last 60 games with hits like that. 
Simmons up over 300 at 301. Two for five this evening. And the double in the eighth extended his hit streak to seven straight. Cole Calhoun had an RBI single off Matt Dermody in the eighth. The bullpen, which had been really effective in the four game sweep of Oakland tonight, having a rougher out. Cam Madrosian and Bud Norris. 16 inning buck in that four game series. Four innings on average in each one of those games. Give up four hits, one run. Different story tonight. The Angels have scored seven runs on 11 hits. The triple for Simmons, his second of the season. And you can see why the Angels are excited by their shortstop. He brings a lot of tools to this team. First and foremost, defense. He's also picked up a stolen base tonight. He's got a 14 stolen bases. Delay steal from second. Heads up. Yeah, he did a good job reading the defense. They were playing in the shift with the left handed hitter at the plate. Parker Bridwell pitching for the first time here at Rogers Center. Bridwell in line for his fifth win against just one loss. Martin Maldonado satisfaction of handling the rookie in this outing. Ben Revere the former Blue Jay. That's starting tonight. He had an impact on his team in 2015. Probably won't start tomorrow either. Francisco Liriano is scheduled to go. He's just playing against righties right handed starters now. Fly ball to left Pierce over near the foul line makes the catch that ends the inning but the Angels score three in the top of the ninth to take a commanding 7 1 lead. Baseball Day presented by Rogers and Sportsnet as we celebrate the sport from coast to coast. The day will feature baseball stories and events from communities across the country. Canada Baseball Day, Sunday on Sportsnet. Bottom of the night we go, Buck Martinez and Pat Tabler. Thank you very much, Hazel May. This is Cam Bedrosian taking over for the Angels. David Hernandez worked out of a situation in the eighth. He 
gave up the only run the Blue Jays have scored. And now Cam Pedrosia, his 21st appearance of the season. Some rough sledding for Bedrosian lately. Took losses in back to back appearances on the 14th and the 18th. He also allowed a career high five runs on Wednesday. That was at Cleveland. So a chance now for the hard thrower to get some innings in, an inning in here and get some work trying to finish off this one. Bedrosian missed 53 games early in the season with a right groin strain. He opened up the season converting all three of his save opportunities then he was put on the disabled list wasn't reinstated until June 17. Smoke Morales and Pierce here in the bottom of the night. Smokes had a couple of good at bats he singled in the fourth that was the first hit off of. Parker Bridwell and then he lined out in the seventh to the right fielder. A ball and two strikes to smoke. Hard breaking ball. Nice block by Maldonado. He's got a great arm. Medrosian. Good fastball. Good breaking ball. It's an above average breaking ball. A little bit of a change up. He was a Angels first round draft pick in 2010 out of high school in Georgia. It shows you why his draft is so high. That good arm. High and deep drive to right. Calhoun's going to watch this one go out of the ballpark. Home run number 29 for Justin Smoke. He's been swinging it good all night long. Got the Blue Jays' first hit in the fourth inning. Was robbed of a hit in the seventh inning on a nice play by the right fielder. Cole Calhoun came over and took away a hit away from Smoke. Got to hit him where nobody's standing. Home run number 29 for Smoke and the Blue Jays add to their lead. Ninth inning or later home runs this year. 23. Ninth inning home runs. As Smoke continues to hit the ball hard. Morales grounds out to the second baseman. One away. Now for a preview of what's coming up next on Sportsnet Central. Here's Jackie Redman and Ben Ennis. Thank you very much Ben that's coming up right after this ball game so stay tuned for all of that. Steve Pierce it's a fly ball to right. Two down another look at that beautiful swing from Justin Smoke. Every home run keeps adding on to his career high that's 29. Another RBI. Home run number 29 RBI number 69. Watch how he stays through this high fastball and finishes with a beautiful swing. Darwin Barney has scored the only Blue Jays run tonight. Check that. He scored the first Blue Jays run in the eighth. Smoke homered here in the ninth. For Smoke, two hits tonight. He now has 105 hits for the season. That's significant. His career high in hits, 108, came in 2013 with the Mariners. And he has had a career season across the board. And he just keeps going. He's getting hotter and hotter. The second half of this season. Smoke has already established a new career high in runs scored. He has now scored 60 runs. One and two. Foul back. Well, it'll be interesting 
tomorrow morning to find out the extent of the injury to Troy Tulowitzki. He left the ball game in the third inning. And hopefully they can put some ice on it. Some work. Get some work on it. And hopefully everything's going to be okay for him. He's not out too long. Ground ball to Escobar. And that's the ball game. The Angels win the opener to this three game series. They snap a three 